All right, we're going to do a little projectile motion problem where you have a cannon that's on top of a cliff. It's going to shoot at an angle, a cannonball. It's going to go up and come down and land somewhere down here on the ground. And what we want to know is how far away from the base of the cannon does this cannonball land? So we're looking for the range of the cannonball. You're given the height of the cliff in the initial velocity that the cannonball is shot off, which means its speed and its angle from the horizontal. Okay, so to do this problem, let's just go ahead and look at this picture again, and then let's look at our um, this angle right here, this, this initial velocity vector here, and let's just go ahead and redraw it as 45 meters per second, and we'll make our right triangle out of it, because remember, we need everything in X and Y components. To work a two-dimensional motion problem, I need to work it in those two dimensions, in this case, the horizontal in the vertical. So let's make that here. There's my horizontal um, velocity vector and my vertical velocity vector, or the x component and the y component of this initial velocity. The 45 meters per second is the resultant. So I'm going to label those on here. This is the initial velocity in the x direction, and this is the initial velocity in the y direction. And we were given this angle of 30 degrees. So using some trigonometry, you know that the sine of 30 degrees is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. So this is your opposite, so and your hypotenuse is the 45. So it equals the initial velocity in the y divided by the 45 meters per second. Multiply both sides by the 45, and you'll solve for v naught y. So the initial velocity in the y direction is 45 times the sine of 30. Make sure you're in degree mode, and you're going to get 22 and a half meters per second. So that is the initial velocity in the y direction. We also then want that in the x direction. So using the cosine of 30, you know that the uh, cosine of 30 degrees is equal to the length of the adjacent side, which is v naught x divided by the hypotenuse, which is the 45 meters per second. So the initial velocity in the x divided by 45, multiply both sides by 45, and so the initial velocity in the x is 45 times the cosine of 30, and you'll get 39 meters per second. So now that we have everything in X and Y components only, this height is already in a Y direction, so we're good. Let's just go ahead and list out all those variables. So we're going to start with the Y direction, and it's important to define our positive direction. In this problem, our cannonball is going up and then coming down, so I think we're just going to go with the conventional up is positive. And so now we'll list out our variables. We've got delta Y, V naught Y, V final Y, A, and T. All right, always the same five that we use because we are going to do constant acceleration so we don't have to deal with the initial acceleration, final acceleration. And the delta Y covers the fact that there's an initial and final position. And then time we're going to mark in blue because, remember, time is independent of direction. So let's fill in what we know. Because we said up is positive, that means my cannonball is going to be, from start to finish, it's going to be going down, it's going to have a displacement down of 60 meters. Yes, it's true, it's going to travel more than that, but that's the distance. I'm talking displacement, and the displacement in the y direction, it's final to initial, is 60 meters down, so negative 60 meters. And then the initial in the y, it's going up 22 and a half, so that's a positive. We don't know the final velocity in the y direction. And the acceleration due to gravity is pulling down at 9.8 meters per second squared. So again, that's negative. All right, so then we'll look at our x direction. And we're going to say right is positive, And we'll fill out our variables real quickly. And then remember that your um, initial and final in the x, it's constant. So really, these are just the same thing. So I don't even really need to bother to say v naught x and v f x. They could just both be v x since it is since they are constant. And we know that they are gonna. That's going to be 39 meters per second. And the fact that it's constant is because there is no acceleration in the x direction. That is zero. And so it's the time that's going to tie my two directions together, and that's going to allow me to solve this problem out. So once I find time in the y direction, because you have enough information in this y direction, remember you need three pieces of information. So I have one, two, and three pieces of information. The fact that this is covering two variables here doesn't count. This is still only going to count as two pieces of information. So you do not yet have enough information in the x direction to solve for delta x. That means I have to use the information in the y direction where I have one, two, three, and find time, which I can then go and plug into the x, and then now I'll have one, two, three.
three pieces of information. So let's look at then at this y direction and let's go ahead and say that we've got delta y, v initial y and a, and we're going to find time. So the formula that would help you do that is the one that says delta y is equal to v naught times t plus one half at squared. And that's because delta y, check we have it, v naught, check we have it, time, check we want it, a, check we have it, and t, again, check we want it. So if I plug in all my numbers here, you'll see that what's going to end up happening, you would have to use the quadratic formula to solve for t in this formula. You don't have, um, because the, the way it's set up, you, you just, you'd have to do that, which you can do, and that's totally fine, but it might be a little easier to just go ahead and solve for v final y first. So if I find v final y, then I could use a different formula to find time. So let's do that. We're just going to go over here and quickly rewrite out all of our information that we know. And this is what we had determined on that other page. So it's good to go. All right, now let's start again with the y direction. And I'm going to be solving for v final in the y direction. So the formula I'm going to use is v final squared equals v initial squared plus 2 times the acceleration times the displacement. Again, v final, check I want it. v initial, check I have it. Acceleration, check I have it. And displacement, check I have it. So plugging in our information, v final y is what I'm looking for. I'm going to leave it as is. Don't forget it's squared. It equals v initial, and don't forget squared in the y direction, plus 2 times the acceleration, which is negative 9.8. Don't forget that sign. It's really important. And again, the sign on the delta y, which is negative. Remember, I can only plug in one direction of information into this formula. So right now I'm plugging in the y information. I could not go and plug in any of this information with it. That doesn't make sense. I can stick, I only can do one direction at a time. So with this formula, I'm dealing with the y direction right now only, and only the y direction variables. So let's go ahead and work this out. When I do the 22 and a half squared and then multiply, Add it to the, the product of these, you get 1,682.25 meters squared per second squared. So, of course, I want v final y, not v final y squared. So, take the square root of both sides, and you're going to get that v final y is 41 meters per second. This is where the problem, you can easily mess up this problem. You have to be super careful. Remember that this cannonball is going down. And because it's going down, it is negative. So this is actually a negative 41 meters per second. You're not going to get that from this because this square root sign is not going to return a negative value. So that is something that you have to be careful of and keep up with and know on your own. So it might be smart just to go ahead and when you are initially writing your variables down, maybe just put a negative sign here just to remind yourself that this is going to have to come out negative. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and fill that in over there, the negative 41 meters per second. And so now I can go ahead and find time with my y direction again, and I can use a different formula where I don't need to use the quadratic formula. So v final is equal to v initial plus acceleration times time. Again, I can only plug in y direction variables down here. So I now know that v final y is negative 41 meters per second. And then, of course, I still have the initial velocity in the y, which was 22 and a half, and then your acceleration. Now this is plus the acceleration. So since it's plus a negative, I just took that negative out. So now it says minus 9.8 meters per second squared times time. So we're going to subtract the 22 and a half to get rid of it over there. And then that leaves us with negative 63 and a half meters per second, which of course is still equal to the negative, don't forget that negative there, 9.8 meters per second squared times time. Divide by that acceleration due to gravity, which will cancel it. And then you're going to get the time in the air, the cannonball um, from launch till it hits the ground is 6.48 meters per second. So now I know that in the x direction. So now I have my three pieces of information in the x direction, and I can go find that final piece of information, which is range, which is what it wanted us to solve for in this problem. So to do that, I'm going to use the same formula that we used up here, but I'm just going to do it, sorry, not here, the, the formula we had tried to use when we would have had to have used the quadratic formula. And to do this, again, I can only plug in my x-direction information here. So 
Um, you know that the acceleration is zero, so that's going to go away. And then that's going to leave me with my delta x, which is what I'm solving for, is equal to the initial velocity, which is the same as the final. It's constant, so 39 meters per second, multiplied by the time of 6.48 meters per second. Sorry, 6.48 seconds. And then when you multiply those, it'll leave you again, leave you, of course, with meters because this per second cancels with the seconds, and you're going to get 273 meters. And so that's how far away the cannonball lands from the base of the cliff.